Hey guys, uh, Charles here. I would like to do this uh, 2021 number two set one. I think this is set one for 2021. There was set one and set two. This is set one, number two. It's obviously a labor question. Let's work our way through and see if we can do it. Assume that Schmidt provides a car parking service in a perfectly competitive output market and hires labor in a perfectly competitive input market. The market price per car is $10. The market wage per worker is $100 a day. Fixed costs are $50 a day. The table shows the number of workers and the number of cars. So uh, these, this is a labor question. Once you recognize it as a question, these tables are almost always done exactly the same way. One, you do about four or five of them. Uh, they get to be pretty easy. Let's see if we can work our way through it. First of all, no number of workers could also be just number of labor or quantity of labor, number of workers, quantity of labor, anything like that would let us know. Number of parked cars, this could be just talked about as quantity. It could also be called output. Um, I like to think of it as total product, right? It is your total product of number of cars parked per worker is all these workers, two workers working together can park 20, three can do 34, four can do 45. It is your total product. Anytime they give you total product, you can pretty much be sure that you're gonna have to find marginal product. If they give you total revenue, you're gonna have to find marginal revenue. They give you total utility, you're gonna have to find marginal utility. It's be, you just have to know it. We're going to see it a lot. Understand when they give us total product, we're going to have to find marginal product. Now, your marginal product is the amount attributed to each worker. Uh, the formula for total product or for marginal product is a change in total product over the change in quantity. Recognize it for the college board. They go from zero most of the time. I don't think I can think of one FRQ question where they jumped around. They go from zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four. This is a change of one quantity. One, so the change in quantity is going to be one. So really all we're interested in is the change in total product to find what our marginal product is. So our mar total product went from zero to eight. You should know this by now, I hope, but for those of you who are looking at it for the first time and haven't seen it in a while, it's good to just remember how to do it. We go from zero to eight. Our marginal product for that first worker is eight. We went from eight to 20. Marginal product is 12. 20 to 34 is 14. Did I do that? Yeah, 12, absolutely. Uh, 34 to 45 looks like 11, 11, yeah. Yes, 11, I'm having a brain fart. 45 to 54, looks like nine, 54, six, and three. So um, marginal product is that change from one to the next. We're gonna take that marginal product and multiply it by the price of the good, right? And that is given to us right here. The market price per car parked is $10. So that's $10 all the way down. Let's talk about what this means for just a second. I think it's important to sort of recognize this as a, as a larger view here. If I have one worker and he can park eight cars and I can charge $10 for every car that he parks, my marginal revenue product or the revenue that I make in for what he does is obviously gonna be $80. He's gonna bring $80 into my company. This guy is going to bring in 120 because he gets attributed 12 additional cars to him coming to work for us. 120. This is just easy. 140, 110, 90, 60, and then 30. Now we're going to take our marginal revenue product and we're going to compare that to our marginal revenue cost. Now they don't call it a marginal revenue cost up here. They call it a wage. We know it could also be called marginal factor cost. You need to know both of those because they like to use them interchangeably. It is the wage. It is your supply of labor curve, whereas your MRP is your demand for labor curve, right? Uh, supply of labor, demand for labor. We'll talk more about this as we do it later on. We know that the wage for every worker is $100. So for each worker we hire, the wage is 100 bucks per day. Now, 
they're going to ask us, they say, calculate the marginal revenue product of the second worker. We've already done that. We know the marginal revenue product is marginal product times price gives us our marginal revenue product. Easy enough is 120. Now they're asking how many workers will Schmidt hire to maximize profits. Now for labor, for labor, what we know is that we hire where our supply of labor or MRC Remember, it could be called your marginal factor cost, marginal revenue cost, or marginal factor cost, where demand for labor and supply of labor meet, where they come together. That's the quantity of labor that we would like to hire. Wage here on the vertical, quantity of labor on the horizontal. Um, and what we know is this is where your MRP equals your MRC. That is profit maximizing for labor. Oops, I'm going to do it right here. Profit max for labor is where your MRP equals your MRC. Now, what does that even mean? I mean, how does that, we know the wage is 100 bucks, right? But look at this. The first guy, he only produces eight cars that he parks. We still, he's, he's not bringing in enough, but we still have to hire him so that we can hire the second guy, right? You can't not hire the first and hire the second. The second guy starts bringing us in some money, right? Um, he brings in 120. We attribute 120 of revenue coming in to the second guy, and we pay him 100. Uh, the third guy brings in 140. We only pay him 100. I like him. I like him the best, I think. The fourth guy brings in 110, and we pay him 100. Look at the fifth guy, though. He only gets attributed nine cars. He's only bringing in 90 bucks to our company, but we have to pay him 100. We would not hire the fifth guy. We would hire the fourth. Now, recognize it for the fourth worker here. Your MRP is greater than your MRC. Well, you're going to say, Charles, you said profit max is where MRP is equal to MRC, and I still agree with that. I, I know that right there is where MRP equals MRC, but we're talking about the real world. It's kind of sloppy, right? I can't hire four and a half people. I can either hire four workers or I can hire five workers. Now, look at my graph here. I would much rather hire the four workers and have the MRP slightly larger than the MRC then hire the fifth worker. With the fifth worker, I'm losing money, right? Obviously, this is our sweet spot right here, somewhere in between four and five workers. But I definitely am not going to hire the fifth worker because the cost would be greater than what the actual amount of money they bring in. So I would not hire the fifth. I'll stop at the fourth worker, and that's going to be the number of workers um, that we want to hire. We want to explain this in a certain way. They want us to use marginal analysis. We would just say that we'll hire up to four workers, and we would say as the marginal revenue product is greater than marginal revenue cost, and we'll say not the fifth worker because marginal revenue product is less than marginal revenue cost for the fifth worker. He would cost us money, so we would not hire him. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Obviously, when you're working through it in your brain, you do these a few times, you can blow through them. You just know that you're going to obviously not hire the fifth guy. We're not going to pay money to hire somebody. The fourth guy's where we'd stop easy enough. Calculate the daily profit uh, for Schmidt at the profit maximizing quantity identified. We identified it as four workers. So four workers... Um, Understand that to look for daily profit. To find profit, it's total revenue minus total costs equals profit. Right? So recognize that total revenue is just price times quantity. This is total revenue. The price we can charge was 10 bucks, and the quantity of four workers was 45. So what we know that our total revenue here is $450. This is how much our four workers brought into our company was $450. Now, total cost is a little bit different. Total cost is not only variable cost, but it's also fixed cost. This is going to give us our total cost here. 
Variable costs, we have to know, is usually talked about with the AP as labor or wages. So our variable cost is 100 bucks for each worker. We've got four workers, four times 100, right? Equals $400, that's our variable cost. Our fixed cost, they give it to us up here, is $50 per day. So we're just gonna add in that fixed cost of 50 bucks a day, and we can see our total cost is $450 also. So our daily profit, we're going to say is zero. Can we see that? Daily profit is zero. Total revenue, 450 minus the 450 of total cost. Daily profit is zero. Nice enough. All right, D. Um, suppose new legislation requires each worker in the parking industry to purchase an individual insurance policy at the worker's expense in order to legally park cars. Will the market wage paid by the typical firm increase, decrease, or stay the same in the long run? Don't let them trick you. Think about this for a second here. We're making it more expensive for workers to be in this industry. Let's set up, a. this is the market graph, and this is the firm's graph. Now, they're not asking us to draw these, but I find it helpful to understand uh, what's going on here. And this is my supply of labor. There and this is going to be my demand for labor. Quantity of labor on the horizontal, just like the firm's graph, wage on the vertical. Get rid of this right here. All right, so we're set up, and then all of a sudden there's new legislation that makes it more expensive. So some of these workers are going to exit out of this industry. Supply of labor is going to shift to the left because now it's more expensive to operate it. On average, people are going to start leaving this industry. Supply of labor shifts to the left. What we know is that our wage is going to go up. As there's less workers, we go from W1 to W2. Supply of labor shifts to the left. Wage goes up. If wage goes up, right? Well, we answered our question, didn't we? Wage goes, it would increase. Wage is going to go up. Uh, they don't ask us to explain it, so we don't really need to. But if we did, I think we just want to say that as there's new legislation, makes it more costly for individuals in this industry. Therefore, some of the individuals are going to exit out of this industry, which means supply of labor would shift to the left, which means the wage and the market would go up. Easy enough. All right. Number two, for a typical firm in the industry, will the number of workers hired in the short run increase, decrease, or stay the same? So recognize that this is our firm. If that wage goes up, now that wage is our supply of labor curve. It is our marginal revenue cost curve. It is the marginal factor cost curve, right? What we can see here is that as the wage goes up, the industry is going to hire less workers. Or this, sorry, not the industry, but this firm. This firm will hire less workers. If the only thing that changes is the wage goes up, Remember, this is our demand for labor or marginal revenue product. The only thing that can shift that demand for labor or marginal revenue product is either marginal product times the price of the good equals marginal revenue product. So either marginal product had to change or the price of the good had to change. And neither one of those did. So your marginal revenue product curve would not shift. Your demand for labor curve, therefore, doesn't change. The only thing that changed was the wage. We hired less people. Easy enough. That should make sense. Uh, so we would hire less people and just explain that, that as the wage goes up, the way we want to say it is that as the wage increases, the quantity demanded of labor would decrease. Right? Not the demand for labor, but the quantity demand for labor. Tricky, right? I hate the wordage, but there's nothing we can do about it. Recognize that we're moving up the curve here. This curve is not shifting. We're moving up the curve, so we're hiring less people. All right, nicely done. I hope that makes some sense to you. Um, great. Be safe, guys. Take care, and see you soon.